Hey guys, Dantix here. Anthem is a frag grenades throwaway from release and Bioware's next action-based shooter, Looter, is looking pretty fantastic. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the specific survivability differences between the four exosuits you can choose from. I'm also gonna show off some melee interceptor skills and talk about what to expect with each javelin. I'm gonna be using footage from multiple sources, some really cool channels, so check them out in the description. First though, I'd like to mention that I'm giving away a digital copy of Anthem on the platform of your choice into the link below. So when you start up the game, you're thrusted into a short tutorial that lets you pilot a ranger javelin with basic abilities. By the time you finish the tutorial, you reach level two. And at that level, you can pick your first javelin. You choose between the ranger, the colossus, the storm, and the interceptor. You won't get to pick another until level eight, then level 16, and finally, your last pick will be at 24, with level 30 being the maxed pilot level, so you want a rough idea of what you're interested in playing. This video should help you make that choice. So before I forget, the pilot's level is tied to your avatar, not the javelins you are piloting. When you level up, you can choose from skills that make you stronger across all javelins, like extended flight time and an extra item slot. I digress. So we've already gone through the individual skills and abilities each javelin will have in the video below, but what about their handling and how survivable they are? So in order to compare, I'm using footage of the javelins in their beginning states. This is with no gear that boosts their health or shields in any way and is their blank default. Each javelin has health segments to represent the amount of health they have. Segments are multiples of a set amount. For example, one segment could be 100 health, so a javelin with two segments would have 200 health and a javelin with three would have 300. We just don't know the exact number yet. Health does not regenerate at all. To restore health, you need to defeat enemies and pick up the health packs they drop. These packs restore an amount of health or a percentage. Once again, we don't have enough information to make that call, but they just don't restore at all. Some javelins also have shields. Shields have segments as well. However, we won't see more than one on the starter javelins. Shields regenerate after a set amount of time of not taking damage, so they're great to mitigate incoming fire. All right, so let's deep dive into the Ranger. The Ranger is the second most maneuverable javelin, only behind the Interceptor and, in a sense, equal with the Storm. It can dodge by rolling and can move around like you would expect. Think the Iron Man when you think the Ranger. It starts with two health segments and one shield segment. We can't be exactly sure how much shields are in that one segment. It could very well be half a segment or even less. My assumption though is it's one full segment. This is your middle of the range tankiness. Nowhere close to the amount of health the Colossus has, but it has a shield and the Colossus doesn't. Also, it has much more survivability than the Storm. Also, being that this Javelin has a wide range of abilities, expect it to be able to stay out of harm's way easily. It can throw a grenade, for example, from behind cover, or fire off a homing missile and dart back behind something. <laughs> Next is the Colossus. Now, the Colossus is unique in that it doesn't have a shield. Well, shield is in the blue bar that regenerates because they most definitely have a physical shield you can whip out. Instead of the shield bar, the Colossus has seven health segments. Yes, seven more than three times the amount the Ranger has. This is one big boy, and he kinda needs to be as he has no dodges or maneuverability options besides jumping and flying away. Once you get in with the Colossus, you're probably gonna stay in the thick of it, and thick he is. With no shields, it means Colossus isn't really designed to disengage in order to recharge survivability. Health doesn't regenerate, so the Colossus will get into big fights take as much as he can, and if unsuccessful, die. If successful, you'll restore health with drops. My assumption is, on later difficulties, managing your health will be paramount, as health drops won't restore all of your segments, and unlike the other javelins, you can't take a few hits and dart away to regenerate the damage you took. You can, however, use your ultimate to regenerate your health, as every javelin's ultimate gives it damage immunity for the duration and restores health and shields on its completion. So the Colossus might need to go into fights not at full health. It has the meat to absorb more than anyone, but it doesn't last forever. However, I glossed over a pretty major point, that instead of dodge, the Colossus has a physical shield that it can pull out to protect itself from frontal attacks. The meat shield has its own health bar and can absorb a set amount before it breaks, after which time it will need to regenerate. 
you can fly with the shield out and you can charge through enemies and smack them around with it, truly the ultimate defense and offense. Keep in mind, you can't use your guns or abilities while holding the shield out, and attacks from the top, from the bottom, from the sides, or even the back will get through, so use this when you're taking the focus of the fire from one direction, or use it when you've taunted. The next javelin is the Interceptor. It's the most maneuverable javelin in the game, able to flip around, dodge, and leap like a ninja. In fact, think of the Interceptor as the Space Ninja. You're going to want to use your maneuverability and get in close, deal high damage in melee, and zip out so your shields can recharge. Speaking of shields, the Interceptor has the same as the Ranger, one shield and two health segments, meaning it has similar survivability. Seems like when you play it, it doesn't. Maybe because it's required to get in closer to fight than the Ranger is. Being up close is the most dangerous place to be, so even though it has more survivability than the Storm, it's also more likely to be targeted and to be hit. Having high maneuverability makes up for that weakness, and so does extremely high damaging melee attacks. The Interceptor's melee strikes chain indefinitely, so you can slash away until your heart's content. Like all the Javelins, the Interceptor's ultimate gives it damage immunity for the duration, so you could save it until you're low health, then unleash the pain. The Interceptor can also build to get into melee and unleash the damage quickly just by using its skills. Here's an example of the Spark Dash ability combined with the Tempest Strike ability. The Spark Dash propels the Interceptor forward, even while in air, and leaves behind a trail of electricity. Then you follow it up with the Tempest Strike that deals high damage and can stun. Both of these abilities detonate targets that are primed, so it's a great set to combo when you have a storm freezing or burning targets around you. Note that the Interceptor gets an aura of the primed effect when it combos, so if the target was burning, you'll get a flaming aura. So it further encourages you to be up close. More on combo effects in my abilities video below. So the last javelin to cover is the Storm. The Storm is your glass cannon javelin, as it only has one shield segment and one health segment. It can dodge by teleporting short distances, which is great for avoiding damage. The biggest difference between the others though, is that it can hover for an extremely long time. While hovering, the shields regenerate a lot faster. You are therefore encouraged to get up high, hover, and rain bullets or your abilities down upon your enemies. If caught out, expect the storm to drop faster than any other javelin. Also, being up high means you have no cover to get behind. If a sniper or a turret locks onto you, you'll be crashing down to the ground in no time. The storm has powerful abilities to make up for its squishiness. The lightning strike, the, the ability you start with, does more damage than any of the other javelin starting abilities. We've also seen how powerful the fire build can be, video below. Now I touched on the ultimates, but what I didn't mention is what each can do and how it will matter. Overall, the ranger's ultimate seems to be the most versatile, able to focus on a single target to deal huge damage or spread out over multiple targets to clear waves. Plus, it does really feel like the Jericho missiles from Iron Man 1. The Colossus's ultimate is great at clearing waves and has up to three shots. The Storms applies a combo effect during its ultimate and the Interceptor has the highest potential damage. So if you want a high damage ultimate, go for the Interceptor. If you want amazing crowd control, go for the Colossus or Storm, and if you want the option of both, go with the Ranger. So those are the four Javelins, their survivability and what they bring to the table. Sitting at the top is the Thick Colossus. It's able to tank a lot of damage, be in the middle of the fight, but will be unable to escape from a dangerous situation easily and has no energy shield to mitigate damage. It'll most likely be easy to play but hard to master. Then you have the Ranger, who is equal second with health and shields, but has abilities that allow to keep some distance from enemies. It can also roll and dodge to avoid damage. As you have so many tools, the Ranger will probably be the easiest to pick up and play. Then you have the Interceptor who needs to get up close, but can dodge and weave its way around the battlefield. Guerrilla Warfare is the name of the game with the Interceptor, getting in close, dealing high amounts of damage and darting out before the enemies know what hit them. As you'll need to get up close and put yourself in a high risk situation, this javelin will most likely have a higher skill cap than the rest. Last is the Storm, and it will be the squishiest of the four, but also be able to reap havoc on the battlefield between its massive amounts of priming abilities, its high damage, and its easily maintained vantage point. 
Glass cannons typically are difficult to play, but in this case, I'd say the Storm is on the same footing as the Colossus, not as intensive as the Interceptor, but not as easy to pick up as the Ranger. So I'll leave it there until next time. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out below or on Twitter or Discord. Love to hear from you all. I'll be back soon with more Anthem content and we'll be streaming the VIP demo on January the 25th. I appreciate all the support, so be sure to hit that bell button and expect more videos soon.